All right, so we have this. Now, now, now that's pretty much all we need from the, uh, from the mass balance equation. Let us go ahead and see what uh, this gives us um, for the momentum balance equation. Okay, so let's now turn to uh, momentum balance. Okay, and let's rewrite it. It's rho partial of p with respect to time. We already know that first term is going to drop out because we have the fundamental assumption of steady flow. Okay. Now, uh, we had written it out as divergence of P isotropic tensor plus 2 mu D. Okay. Uh, body force we dropped out. Okay. So, this is what we have and then let's, let's also remind ourselves that this term is gone. Okay. To make things easier now, I am going to sort of do what we did for the mass balance condition, the mass balance equation. I'm going to go to coordinate notation, okay, here. All right. Using coordinate notation, this becomes... Um, rho v i comma j v j equals p delta i j plus 2 mu times 1 half v i comma j plus v j comma i. Uh, all of this comma j. All right. And um, you know that what we have here is simply the spatial gradient of the, of the spatial velocity plus the transpose of that term. Right? All of this indices i, j. Okay, that's what we have there. Okay, now uh, let's look at uh, this term by term. Let's first consider what we have in here. Okay? All right, we don't need to carry the road along here. We can just look at what we have in, in those parentheses. And what this is, is uh, vi, comma, j, Vj. Now, this term, this term as well as what we have up here holds for i equals 1, 2, 3. Okay? And this also holds for i equals 1, 2, 3. But note that V1 and V2 are each equal to 0. And what that implies then is that we need to consider just V3 comma J Vj, okay, of the, the terms on the left-hand side, okay? So um, this is the only survivor, right? Okay, all right. So, uh, but even this can be further simplified, right? Because now we have this contraction over J and we already know that V1 and V2 are equal to zero, okay? So what this implies then is that we have V3 uh, comma one V1 plus V3 comma two V2 plus V3 comma three V3. Now, for different reasons, each of these terms is zero. V1 is zero, V2 is zero, because of that assumption that we made leading us to a semi-inverse method. And we've already demonstrated that V3 comma 3 equals zero. 
Okay? So, what we've shown is that the entire convective velocity drops out. Okay? And therefore, our uh, momentum balance okay, is just divergence of the stress equals zero, right? And for the stress, we already have this relation. Okay? Let's go back to coordinate notation. We'd already written out this uh, left-hand side now, uh, what has now become the left-hand side. We'd already written it out in uh, coordinate notation. Okay, so in coordinate notation, we have P delta ij plus 2 mu times 1 half v i comma j plus v j comma i the whole comma j equals 0. Okay? And this holds for i equals 1, 2, Okay, now we take the derivative with respect to xj here of p. Okay, that gives us a gradient of p, but then the delta ij does its job, right? So this basically becomes p comma i, right? Plus the two mu and the half. Sorry, the two and the half go away, of course. Uh, we have mu v i comma j j plus v j comma i j. Okay. Again, for i equals one, two, three. All right. Let us now look at what happens with each of these, with this relation for each of the directions, okay? And of course, this is equal to zero, okay? Let's look at what happens for i equals one, two, three. So, for i equals one, we have p comma one plus mu times v one comma jj plus v j comma 1 j equals 0. Okay? We already know that v1 equals 0, therefore this term vanishes. Okay? Uh, let us look now at what happens with uh, this term. Okay? That is v 1 comma 1 1 plus v 2 comma 1 2 plus v 3 comma 1 3. Everything drops out, right? This drops out because v 1 equals 0, that drops out because v 2 equals 0, and here we see that v3 comma 1 3 is basically the same as v3 comma 3 1 okay but that that is just v3 comma 3 the whole thing differentiated with respect to x1 all right so this thing also equals 0 okay now exactly the same thing happens for i equals 2 as well Okay?
okay? Again, this, this basically comes about from the fact that V1 and V2 are equal to zero. And we have uh, V3 comma 3 equals zero from the divergence condition, right? So what this implies then is uh, since all of this on the right-hand side drops out, right? All of this goes out, goes to zero, right? This implies that P comma one equals zero, P comma two equals zero, okay? So the pressure is a function of X3 alone, right? So from here we see that P equals P function of X3 alone, all right? Okay, so now let's go to I equals three and see what happens. For I equals three, we have uh, P comma three plus mu V three comma JJ plus VJ comma three J equals zero. Okay implying that P comma 3 plus mu. Okay, uh, let me expand everything out. The first term is V3 comma uh, 1, 1 plus V3 comma 2, 2 plus V3 comma 3, 3. Okay, and the second term, so all of these come from here, okay? And uh, the second term is uh, V1 comma 3, 1 plus V2 comma 3, 2 plus V3 comma 3, 3. And these terms arise from there. Okay, close parentheses equal to zero. Now again, we can play our, we can, we can invoke all the conditions we've derived. This thing drops out because it's V3 comma 3, 3, but then we already know V3 comma 3 equals zero, right? Uh, here we have V1 equals zero from assumption, V2 equals zero from assumption. Again, V3 comma 3, 3 drops out, okay? So, Truly, the only equation we have left to solve is this one. Partial of P with respect to X3 equals mu um, V3 comma 1, 1 plus V3 comma 2, 2. But you recall that we'd set V3 equals to chi, okay? On a previous slide, let me just go back there, uh, we made the... Uh, Observation, I think it's two slides back. Right, here we are. We made that observation. Okay? What that implies is that out here, this is the only term that survives. Okay? And this is chi comma 1, 1 plus chi comma 2, 2. All right? Now that we uh, will write as um, chi comma, well, let, me, let me write it as exactly that, chi comma one one plus chi comma two two. All right? Oh, wait, it's not equal to this, it is that plus this equals zero, okay? That's really the only equation we need to solve. Okay, we'll stop here and come back and actually solve these equations.